Hi there. This is Deb Show. Welcome to this recording of the Jumpstart 2025 Masterclass that I hosted on uh, Monday, October 28th in 2024. You are about to watch this recording, and I just wanted to intro it by saying, please uh, feel free to share this with anyone else. If you're watching this on YouTube, please comment below. If you have questions, there will be links in the YouTube video uh, to access all of the resources that I mentioned, as well as the links to purchase the coaching program at the end of the masterclass. So if you have a question about this program or anything, um, send me an email at deb at findcalmhere.com and let me know how things are going and how I can help you. Uh, enjoy the masterclass. So I don't know if you felt like in the past that maybe you've um, launched something or not launched something, but wherever you are on that spectrum, uh, today is going to be super helpful for you. It's most mostly focused on beginner new community builders. So just to preface it by that, <laughs> and I want to start with a little visualization. I want to think of us to think all about a year from now. What's your ideal experience with an online business? Whether that means that you're going to have a coaching program, a consultancy, a, a course, a program, any of those things. Um, just thinking in your mind for a second, what's your ideal experience going to look like a year from now? And then if anybody wants to throw something in the chat, um, you've, you're, you're welcome to, and if you don't have to though. <laughs> oh, okay, Joe, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> um, so I think it's, it's helpful to visualize where we want to go so that we can see, so we can know the goals, right? Where to, where to get to, how to get there. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of these topics. We're going to talk about three reasons community, community builders and communities struggle. We're going to talk about how purpose, how your purpose drives engagement. We're going to talk about the four-step idea method. We're going to talk about effortless marketing strategies, and we're going to talk about decision-making confidence for success. Um, loving the comments. Thank you and keep them coming. Um, so just wanted to share with you a little bit about myself. I'm a creative and strategic coach who's determined to help my clients build inspirational communities that transform members, relationships, careers, or lifestyles. I've guided more than 100 leaders in developing an online community course or program. I'm also the author of Creator to Community Builder, Find Calm While Building Your Online Community. And I've hosted the Community Strategy Podcast with thousands of downloads and over 100 episodes. But enough about me. Here's a question for you to think about. Would you rather spend <laughs> six to nine months experimenting with no revenue or no money coming in the door? Or would you want to launch your thing, whatever that thing is, <laughs> all while having the tools you need to succeed. Um, put a six in the chat for six months or a 60 for 60 days. Uh, just looking for getting a sense of where, where we're at with thinking about how long we expect this to take us. Like, do we think it's gonna take a long time or do we think that it's something we could actually do pretty quickly? So I was thinking about sharing with you a little bit about my journey while we're thinking about the this, this situation here, the three to nine months or six to nine months. A lot of the clients that I've worked with, and I, I started working with clients in 2020, and a lot of them struggled for about six months to a year, um, trying to figure out what their model is, what they're going to do, how they're going to launch it, what's the pricing, how long is the course, you know, trying to figure all those things out. And they kept bouncing around and they get stressed out and it's, it's, it's frustrating. So I think, and the comments are in the chat are saying about 60, which I think is totally possible because I've done it and I know clients I've helped have done it too. So uh, we'll start with a little bit about what communities 
builders get wrong sometimes because <laughs> that's always helpful to know what not to do, I think. And if you have a question, throw it in the chat. Feel free to um, throw it in the chat and I will get with those at the end of our session here. So a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that they don't focus, uh, they focus on content instead of connection. Knowing your members, your ideal members helps you. Um, they also lack designed onboarding experiences. A lot of the time, new members struggle uh, to enter in a community or know what to do because the host hasn't guided them or told them what to do. Uh, and then the other uh, third reason is uh, community builders miss their ideal members. It's difficult to create meaningful engagement and momentum when you don't have the right people in the room. And a lot of this work I've done is with that specifically of who is my ideal person? What are we going to do together? And knowing your ideal member helps you understand why you don't need that much content to launch. It also allows you to become engaged and build deeper relationships with less people, provides the container to get them to a solution faster. And uh, if you aren't going to build an audience of a thousand people, how do you become profitable as a community builder? I believe it's finding your purpose. One of my favorite quotes is from Maya Angelou. And she, I wrote, I put this in my book as well. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I think it's such a powerful quote because sometimes we think so much about all of the different methods and systems and programs and all of those things. And it really comes down to how do you feel and how do you want others to feel when they're in your presence or with you? And so that helps us kind of look at these three questions to get clear on our community concept and ideas. And so a couple questions to get to clarity are, do you know who you're bringing together and why? Um, post a yes in the chat if you do, if you know your ideal members. And if you don't, post soon <laughs> because you'll figure those out soon. Yeah, thanks. Um, I don't know if uh, you, you've you also thought about the problem that your community solves. Sometimes uh, people think that communities solve lots of problems, but they don't always solve problems. There are reasons why we go to doctors and lawyers and people that know what they're doing, right? We go to those people for a service, but they wouldn't help us keep keep going, right? And keep encouragement when we are working on our, our own individual efforts and goals. Um, thinking about maybe a community that shares that the community offers a solution for a group of people who are learning how to do something and they can practice with each other. So thinking about those kind of things of how can people interact? Uh, and then is your community the right solution for them? Do we know that it is or isn't kind of, um, if you want to put in the chat, yes, I know what it is, or no, I'm not sure if the community is the right solution for the problem that you want to solve. So, too excited. <laughs> so we've all heard stats about how many people are online. More importantly, Many people who are regularly engaged online are also looking to make connections. According to an article by Peerboard, 76% of internet users were projected to participate in some type of online community. And over 2.9 billion people are reported to be active on Facebook, which is home to more than 10 million groups. And chances are likely that a majority of those nearly 3 billion users are in at least one group. Those stats demonstrate that there are more ways than ever to connect digitally with others. The sheer volume of opportunity doesn't necessarily mean that they've increased the sense of belonging. They felt like they belong somewhere. And all too often, people still feel isolated as though they don't have a voice. A lot of that you see in social media um, where you, you know, you're posting what you want people to think about you instead of like 
you, right? We're present, we're presenting, we're performing on social media. That's how it's become. We can't just like, we can, but a lot of people choose not to just be ourselves um, on social media. And as a community builder, establishing your purpose is critical to ensure your members feel they belong and will be heard. So here's why having a clear purpose will help you. It'll help you ensure that you are intentionally bringing people together to solve a specific problem. It's also going to help your ideal members know that they have a problem and they want to desperately solve it. So that's another key point of this um, this community building aspect here is that if they have a problem, they might have the problem and not solve it for a while. <laughs> they might know that they have a problem, but they don't look for solutions right away. It really is until something gets really dire that we're like, I need some support. I need somebody to help me with accountability. And that's what a community really does well. It helps a group, a program, or community is how the problem will be solved with support, encouragement, accountability, and access to resources. So those are ways that you can identify your purpose um, and then develop engagement strategies through understanding these core aspects of purpose and engagement. Uh, if anybody has any questions, again, throw them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them at the end. Uh, the idea method is something I came up with and, um, thought it was, would be easy for a four-step process to think about this in a structured way. So the idea method is just identify your ideal members, discover, um, and discover what they want to accomplish together, um, and what they need to transform. And then evaluate your community concept after speaking with your ideal members. And finally, assemble your launch plan timelines with pre-launch, launch, and post-launch phases. One of the most challenging aspects of community building is reaching and finding your ideal members. You'll need to give them good reasons to why their, your community deserves their time, money, and attention. To gain members who are committed to your community's purpose and who are interested in showing up to collaborate you'll need to have a few strategic elements in place. A lot of times when I ask community builders, do you have a launch plan or a strategic plan? They say no. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, you might you know, want to think about that going forward. Um, and when you launch a community, you'll want to make sure you invite the right people in the room. Um, community building is all about building relationships among members. To help your community concept make its way to the finish line, this idea method is something that you could use to start implementing your community strategy. Um, a lot of clients I worked with have this concept of uh, wanting to serve multiple audiences or have multiple offers or opportunities. And I really believe that if you only have if you have one specific um, problem that you solve for a specific group of people, it works uh, much, much better. And uh, so I love this Priya Parker quote, in, in a world of infinite choices, choosing one thing as a revolutionary act, imposing that restriction is actually liberating. Now, we have to kind of think about, okay, for you, you know, you might be thinking about, well, how do I start with this? What do I do? <laughs> Now that I've known what people do that's wrong, how do I do the right thing, right? You want to start off on the right foot. Well, you want to think about these three questions to get more clarity on your community concept. What's the common thread that connects members, your ideal members? So what do they have in common? What are they doing together? Can you picture activities they'd be passionate in participating? Um, maybe that could be, you know, Laughter yoga, which I've hosted in a lot of communities before, that could be act, other activities in person. Maybe you're going on hikes with people because a lot of people like hiking in your group. Think about um, why they would share this community with others. I know I wrote in my book and I talk about um, Location Indie quite a bit on my podcast. And they were the community that I first started with. And the reason why I got into community building was because I had such an amazing experience as a community member that I realized I really wanted to learn more about it and also share it with others, share this community with others. And so I wrote blog posts about it. <laughs> What's the A? 
what was the A? Oh, go back. I'll go back. Assemble. <laughs> It's assemble, identify, discover, evaluate, and assemble. Yep. Thanks, Joe, for asking. Um, so those are the three questions you might want to consider. Like, why would they share this and who would they share this with um, to bring in other members, uh, as well as just tell people about how, what the experience they're having with you in your, in your community or course. Now I'm gonna jump into some practical stuff. So uh, this is just my experience. There's lots of other ways to do things, um, but I'm just gonna give you a couple just pro tips from what I've learned. I did not value as much the email list in the beginning. And the one number one thing I tell clients to do is just have some kind of a place to tell people what you're doing and for them to like learn more about it, like have a wait list or some kind of splash page is what they call it or landing page. You might've heard those terms before. Um, these are two examples that I set up. And again, it does not take that long to set these up, especially when you've done the pre-work of knowing like what your community concept is, who you're serving, that problem that you solve. It really is gonna come together pretty quickly um, and you already will have this content. So this is just basically a page for you to tell people about your program or for you to collect emails, maybe when you're not ready to launch yet, but you just want to start getting to understand who's interested in your idea. And like, maybe they want more information. Um, so I would suggest starting with an email list and trying to develop that because you can own that. Um, I also would tell you to invest in social media or sorry, a web presence. And that helps for SEO a lot of the times. Um, that's a longer term strategy, but there are simple places for you to create free websites. Um, one I have used before is Card and another one is Weebly. <laughs> right now, I have a WordPress website that I've been working on for about 10 years, 11 years, and it's down right now. And so it's frustrating when those things happen, but I'm glad that I have other backups that I can use these like free websites to point people to in the meantime. Um, so those are just some free resources. I actually helped a, a, one of my friends with her card website. She's a, a theater director and she actually has a community that she wants to build uh, courses for people who want to learn more about acting. And so she has these like coaching programs and things like that. And so I helped her put her website together and we really did it in, in just a very short period of time. The other thing I would I suggest for like, not struggle, not again, not making it super hard. Like how can we make this as po easy as possible? Um, thinking about maybe who else you could collaborate with. One of the number one um, recommendations when I had interviewed David Siegel, who's the former CEO of Meetup, I don't know if you're familiar with Meetup. It's a very large, uh, over 10 year in existence community where they have multiple communities where you can, um, the whole purpose is for you to meet people online and then get in person. <laughs> and I interviewed him. And the number one thing he told me, I said, what is your best recommendation for community builders that are just starting out? He said, get a partner. <laughs> and I would agree. Um, I know sometimes it, it feels like there might not be somebody out there and it might take some time to get a partner, but, um, and you might not get somebody in the beginning, but I think just thinking about that and keeping your eyes out and maybe talking to people about, oh, do you know anybody that is in this field or that has similar um, passions? Just thinking about that. And this quote, I also put in my book, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much which is a very awesome quote that I believed from Helen Keller is so true. Um, if you, uh, since I'm apparently giving a thumbs up, if anybody else wants to give a thumbs up about that quote, <laughs> you can also do that. <laughs> uh, next, we're going, we're streaming right through. <laughs> um, effortless marketing strategies. So social media, I really recommend not doing so many things at the same time. I suggest one primary and one secondary social media account, and that's it. Um, I would say, so I, the first thing I would do was your primary is where your ideal members are spending time. My ideal members are spending time on LinkedIn. 
So I am spending a lot of time in, in, in connecting with others, in learning about what others are doing, and also sharing my own work on LinkedIn. And I've gotten clients through LinkedIn. I've developed partnerships and collaborations through LinkedIn. Um, so it's been definitely a place where I felt that my time investment and commitment to that platform has been worthwhile. Um, the other platform I use is YouTube. And because YouTube is such a powerful search engine, I have actually found that it's really helpful for you to get expedite how people get to know you. I know that most of you all know, if you own a business, you've probably heard of the no like, and trust factor. And so one of the key things about YouTube is that you can really expedite that no like, and trust factor by doing short videos on uh, YouTube or other platforms that I, I'm going to try TikTok, I think in the future, I haven't jumped in yet, but <laughs> But I, that's why I said, just focus on the two and I'm still trying to get better at YouTube right now. So I've been doing really great with LinkedIn and I'm working on improving my, my skills on YouTube. And so those are the two platforms I, I really like. So maybe those aren't yours. Maybe yours is Facebook, you know, and, and something else. So just think about those two things that where your ideal members are, where they're spending time so that you can go there. And when people say, well, where do I find my ideal members? I said, go to them because that whole phrase of build it and they will come is, is just not true in this world. People want you to bring, want you to come to them, want you to meet them where they are. Uh, next, uh, collaborations. So I'll just briefly talk about some awesome collaborations that I've had. I've been in some really great uh, networking groups online that I've met people through. The one specifically that I started connecting with is people in the creator network. This is through Kit. It used to be formerly ConvertKit, which is an email marketing provider that I use. And with, with, their, uh, with their program, with their paid membership, you get access to the creator network. And that's thousands of creators that are on there that, that you can ask them to recommend you. And with the creator network, what they do is they take like, they ask you three questions and then they match you with uh, similar creators who are creating content that's similar to yours. And then those recommendations will come up when somebody says they want to subscribe to my newsletter, then the recommendations of people that I've recommended will come up. And then there's also a place for people to recommend me. And I think I've been doing this less than six months and I have so far 215 creators that are recommending me which is amazing. So that's effortless for sure. <laughs> like I am not doing any work there other than making sure I'm active in the uh, creator network and um, that I've updated my profile. If you want more information on ConvertKit, I can um, certainly guide you to that. And I'll send you that in the follow-up email uh, information about Kit. I love that Joe. So Joe's sharing in the chat. Uh, I do a live Monday through Friday on Facebook for people to get to know you. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, you don't ask people to add you. I do sometimes. It depends on the, the person. The kit used to have um, meetups. They haven't done it for quite a while now, but for when they first launched the creator network, they actually had virtual meetups where you can meet more creators through, a, through the Zoom basically and get connected to them. They're not doing that right now, but I have been able to connect with a lot of community builders through their, their, the way they match up. And there's ways you can sort through, like put a keyword in of like courses or community, and it'll come up with those creators that are like you. And you can, I would recommend subscribing to their newsletter before you start recommending them so that you know you like it. <laughs> so that if somebody asks, why are you recommending this person? You can be like, here's why. <laughs> Um, so I would, I would definitely recommend that. So again, last, the last thing we're going to talk about here is decision-making confidence for success. I think a lot of the, the, the learning that I've had throughout the years with clients has been about how to make a decision and stick to it. <laughs> because a lot of the times I know I struggled with selecting one lane. 
But here uh, I give you the five little steps that I think are helpful when you're trying to make a decision um, about community building in general. Identify your strengths and what you enjoy doing. If you don't like going live on Facebook or if you don't like, you know, having webinars, then don't do those things. Find what you do like doing. If you love talking to people one-to-one, if you love talking to people in groups, do those kind of things to um, identify your ideal members and those getting getting those things set up. Um, test out one idea. A lot of people tell me they have like three different offers, like offer one, offer two, and offer three. And that's a lot for people to, for you to explain and for them to understand. So I usually say to focus on one offer and then test it out with people who are not your friends or your family, people that are your ideal members. They're interested in what you're talking about. They have a problem and this, this, what you're talking about is going to help them solve it. Also designing an experience that you would enjoy yourself. Again, here, I have worked with so many community builders that said, man, community building is really hard. And I said, it is, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a lot simpler when you just focus on what your strengths are, what you enjoy doing, and then creating and designing experiences that you would like to attend. I had I had been to a, an event where they had a uh, meditation and then we did some journaling and and then we had you know breakout rooms where we shared in a virtual call. And I loved that experience. And that was from another community that I'm a member of, but I was so thankful that they decided to do those things because that was really in line with what I wanted to do. And then the only other one is brain dumping <laughs> your ideas. So I really recommend just thinking of, okay, what are all the things that I want to do? <laughs> I have a, this course, maybe I have a three-part course, maybe I have a six-month program, put it all down on paper. And then decide, and you can do this either by, you know, having a line in the middle of your paper and putting one on now and not now, <laughs> um, or do it however works best for you. But I would suggest there's a little shelf there with the pictures on. And I always tell clients, I learned this from another client, actually, put it on a shelf, whatever the other things are, and select the one thing that is the now. You should only have one thing in your now column. And then the other things are not now. And that really just simplifies what you choose to do and how you choose to roll out. Let's say you do have five courses. We'll start with course one and then see how that goes. Because what's going to happen is you're going to learn so much in the first iteration that things are going to change throughout your next courses and programs and things like that. And then focus on the connection. I said earlier in the presentation that, you know, one of the things community builders miss is this idea of putting more content in in front and not connection. So that's another thing that I am really thinking that would help you to clarify and make decisions around this. Okay, well, I don't need a lot of content. I only need to focus on how others are transforming and how we're going to learn together and how I can just utilize what I already have and not create something new. So I think that's another thing that people think, well, I have to record all eight weeks of classes. No, you don't. You can just have live classes or you can decide to do something differently. You know, it's it's really up to you. But I feel like this kind of helps you kind of narrow down some of those decision making process things, because community building is a lot about like any business. It's a lot about making decisions. You can't do everything all at once. <laughs> I had a client that said, well, I want to do this and this and this and this. I said, great. But today we can only do one of those things. <laughs> so thinking about it in that in that perspective, and I think that'll help you um, in making some of those decisions as you go forward. So just to recap what we talked about today, top three reasons um, why communities fail, how purpose drives your engagement, intro to the four-step idea method, which was... Um, in the presentation that I did earlier, effortless marketing strategies and decision-making confidence for success. So the other thing I would like to share with you is now we, I talked about a 60-day launch plan in the beginning of this, right? So now we're going to get back to, okay, well, what does a 60-day launch plan look like now? 
Um, I have some just estimated time launch on the on the slide there. The first two weeks, you're really going to focus on that identify and discover. You're going to think about who am I serving? What problem am I solving? Talking to them, either doing a survey or doing research or, or having those conversations. And then you're going to think about the next two weeks. You're going to think about doing the evaluating and assembling. Okay, well, what did they say? Or what results did I get from the survey? Now, based on that information, what does my concept look like now? What does it look like after I've talked to them? Maybe you learned that they're going to um, need more time. Maybe four weeks is not enough for a group coaching program. Maybe you need eight weeks or 12 weeks. And they've told you, oh, I really like, you know, having a little bit longer time to connect with people. That would be able to change your strategy if you had it at four weeks. Now you can change it to 90 days or something. Um, and then the, so that's the first 30 days. And then the next 30 is really focused on your marketing and your pre-launch. So your splash pages called, or also called a landing page can help you by um, promoting your community before it launches. So to build up that email list and to get people interested about what you're doing, you can create and email marketing throughout those 30 days, maybe you're sending um, one or two emails a week to your email list to talk about this upcoming program you have coming up and also giving them some other resources. I usually say to clients, you want to give, 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 and then ask. So like giving a lot of things for free and not asking right away, but like holding on to give value and then ask. Um, before com comparing community platforms or spending money on time, I recommend you decide on what features and functions that you want first. Um, and starting with a small group to test your idea, five or 10 people is great. If you're launching a time program, such as a four-week course or a three-month coaching program, be strategic when it is going to happen. Like the least preferable times are in the summer to launch something like that because people are traveling. It's just, that's what people are doing. <laughs> a lot of people, at least in the US, I don't know. I think Europe people too take a pretty long summer off. Um, and also during the holidays, cause people are kind of just, they're spending time in person with their family and friends. And so they, yeah, <laughs> I read your mind. <laughs> yep, exactly. They're, you know, they're spending time with friends and family. So I really suggest either, you know, the spring or the fall, which, so this is a great time to think about what you're gonna do in January which is why we're calling this Jumpstart 2025. Um, some of my clients started an email list that had, they had over 100,000 people, while others just had small uh, social media followings or a very um, few number of email subscribers. And some didn't even have a list. And so why I say that is you might be thinking, well, I don't really have anybody who, you know, who wants, who's interested. Maybe you're thinking that. I've thought that many times before <laughs> and clients have thought that. And what the answer is, is that you just need to work on that ideal member. That might take you more than two weeks. So thinking about expanding that, I don't know what your schedule is like. Maybe there's a lot going on in your life. You've got to think about the holidays coming up, you know, so expand this if you need to. But these, the way I've kind of shown you through this, for this presentation, you should be able to, to at least get a one offer together and ready to present and launch within 60 days. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit of costs around to give you a little bit of a reality check. I have worked with so many clients that have invested a lot of money in platforms and tools and software and coaches and stuff. And so I wanted to just break down with American adults making an estimated 35,000 decisions per day, it's easy to experience decision fatigue leading to poor choices and inaction. For community builders, this is a decision fatigue can be costly and um, it could cost up to $20,000 in the first year. I kind of break it down there on the slide, but basically it often takes about six months or a year to figure out the platforms, refine offers and launch, resulting in zero revenue that whole time that you're not doing your programs and launching. And sometimes it takes even more, even more longer for people because they just get stuck in like the marketing stuff that we hear about online, you know, like, oh, you should be posting every day on social media, or you should be launching this kind of a program. 
And we get stuck in a lot of what other people tell us we should do, which is what I got stuck in in the beginning. But I really encourage you to, to focus on what it is you want to do and how you want to get it done and what your budget is and what's realistic. So I'm just going to share with you real quick about this upcoming launch program that I have. It's called Jumpstart 2025. It's an eight-week cohort that starts January 6th. Um, it's going to help you to launch your course group or membership in 60 days. The Jumpstart program runs from January 6th to February 28th. There's 90-minute live group coaching, co-working and collaborations, and exclusive content and resources. The investment here is um, a $500 deposit that's due by uh, the end of October. And you could either do a payment plan or you could pay in full by January 6th. So those are the two options. I'm just gonna give you a few more things to think about and then I'll stop sharing and we can chat a little bit. Um, the Community Builder Pro Pack is what I'm building in and all of the resources, these are all these cool resources that I've developed over the last three, four years. Um, you're gonna get them all included here instead of having to pay for some of these because some of these are not free. And then there's some client testimonials just to, sh to show you some other people that I've helped um, in this process of community building and sharing perspectives and insights and strategies and asking questions and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to promise that you will make your investment back after launching your first course program or membership. And if you don't, I'll keep coaching with you for free <laughs> until you do. So that's my, my 10X promise and guarantee. So if you would like to talk more about this, you can schedule a call uh, by emailing me directly and letting me know that you want to talk about this program more in detail to see if it is right for you. Thanks so much for spending this time um, investing that in yourself to learn more about online community building, developing uh, ideas and strategies, and uh, selling products and services. If you have an a idea, I can't wait to hear it. I hope that you comment below. And um, these offers, I, I mentioned that I'm needing a deposit by the end of October. So it's a pretty uh, short timeline as to when we're going to be um, committing here. So if you uh, are interested in this, please uh, sign up as soon as possible. Because again, I think this offer I'm planning to um, only, I'm looking only for five people. So just to let you know, there's only five spots. So sign up today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I hope you're finding some calm.